Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Camping out! Hi, Ben. Hi, Holly. Are you ready to come camping? Yes, please. Um, why have you brought an orange? It's to scare off gnomes. You know what they say. To scare off a gnome, bring an orange from home. What's wrong with gnomes? Oh, you don't want to bring a gnome on a camping trip. They talk and talk and talk and talk. Yes, gnomes are just like elves. Absolutely not. Gnomes are greedy, boring creatures who talk and talk and talk and Goodness, talk and... Goodness, look at the time. We really should be going. Bye, Mummy and Daddy. Bye, Nanny. Goodbye. Have fun. Watch out for those gnomes. Don't worry. We've got our orange. Here's the timetable. One, set up camp. Two, hang up washing. Three, make a campfire. Four... Dad, we're on holiday. Try to relax, Mr Elf. I'll do my best, Mrs Elf. Here we are. yippity doo da <laughs> <laughs> Will there be any dancing? Can we sing songs? There will be no dancing or singing. Just camping. Here's the tent. Shall I magic the tent up for us, Mr Elf? Holly, I'd rather you didn't do any magicking. Remember, this is an elf camp. Elves have been camping for hundreds of years. We can put tents up with our eyes closed. Wow! One elf tent. Hooray! Lovely. Now we're on holiday. Yes. And that means there's holiday work to be done. Holiday work? Next on the list, hang out the washing. But we've only just arrived. Why do you need to hang out the washing? A campsite can never be too clean and tidy. I'll slice the orange. Mrs Elf, how do oranges keep gnomes away? It's the smell. Gnomes hate the smell of oranges. Oh. There. Now we're safe. Next on the list, collect sticks for the campfire. Here are some sticks. Here are some more. OK, that's enough sticks. <laughs> oh. Hello there. A gnome. Mind if I join you? Uh, well... Thank you. I'll only stay for a week or two. Oh, no. But... We had an orange. Yes. I wouldn't have found you if it weren't for the smell of this orange. But gnomes hate oranges. Normally, yes. But I'm on a balanced diet, you see. If I eat ten pies and twenty steam puddings, I need to balance that by eating fruit. <sighs> Let's make a fire. How do you make a fire, Mr Elf? Rub two sticks together really fast, like this. <sighs> you have to rub the sticks a little bit faster. <sighs> Would you like to hear the interesting thing I know about sticks? <sighs> sticks grow on trees. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh! I'm nice and warm now. That's because fire is hot. <laughs> <sighs> I'm hungry. Me too. What a surprise. I've hardly eaten anything today. I've only had ten pies, a skip full of chips, 30 apple tarts. Wow! That's a lot. A sponge cake, 100 sausages and that orange. I thought you said you were on a diet. Oh, I am. There are some things I don't eat, like stones, wood and television sets. But nobody eats those things. What? You're on this diet too? I never knew it was so popular. What's for dinner, Mrs Elf? Cheese and onion pie. Ooh, thank you very much, Lee. That's tasty. Yes, it's crummy. Ooh, very good. What's that? It's an owl. It's got very big eyes. 
Would you like me to tell you an amazing fact about owls? Uh... I'll take that as a yes. The owl is in fact a bird. It has big eyes for seeing things. <laughs> Six o'clock. Time for bed. Oh. I'll put the fire out. Can't you leave it to keep the owl warm? It's dangerous to leave a fire going, Princess Holly. That's right. Don't go to bed till the fire is out. And don't go to bed with a carrot on your head. <laughs> That's silly. Then, Holly, you get in the tent and go to sleep. Mr Gnome, you have to go home. But we're having fun. Elf camping is not meant to be fun. Bedtime is at six o'clock, not the middle of the night. Oh, I know a song about the middle of the night. Would you like to hear it? No! I'll take that as a yes. In the middle of the night, the stars twinkle bright. Rinky dinky do, rinky diddly dee. Dooby dooby doo, dibbly dibbly dee. <laughs> All together now. Rinky dinky do, rinky diddly dee. Dooby dooby doo. For bed. It was lovely meeting you, Mr. Gnome. But now we need to get some sleep. Oh, yes. A good night's sleep is very important. Rinky dinky do, rinky diddly dee. Dooby dooby doo, dibbly dibbly dee. Rinky dinky do. Stop! Would you like me to stop? Yes! And please go! Would you like me to go? Yes! Goodbye! Oh, no. oh, sleep well. See you in the morning. <laughs> Mr Gnome is funny. He is silly. Yes, really silly. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. <sighs> <gasps> it's the gnome. He's come back to eat our breakfast. Oh, a mole. <laughs> oh, it's eating our washing. Shoo, shoo. Go away, mole. <laughs> Princess Holly, do you know a magic spell to get rid of moles? I'm sorry, Mr Elf. I don't. Oh, dear. Think, Mr Elf. What gets rid of moles? Hello. Yes, moles don't like us gnomes. No idea why. Ah, uh, thank you, Mr Gnome, for uh, saving our campsite from the mole. That's all right. What's for breakfast? The mole ate all the food. Oh, dear. Good morning. Nanny, Nanny Plum! How was your night? It was very strange. Mr Gnome turned up and he loves oranges. And Mr Gnome sang a funny song called Rinky Dinky Doo. Then a mole came along and ate our washing line and all our food. And now we haven't any breakfast. Yes, I thought that might happen. That's why I've brought the magic picnic basket. Breakfast for everyone! Hooray! Hooray! Oh, I'm actually very hungry. Oh, have you not eaten either? Not today. Oh, dear, it's empty. <laughs> it isn't empty. It's a magic picnic basket. Magic basket, please. Breakfast for everyone! Hooray! I get the idea. Magic basket, please. Twenty poached eggs. Lots of toast. Nine jars of jam. Forty sausages and ninety pancakes. Yippee! What a splendid breakfast. Thank you, Mr Gnome. Breakfast is one of the things gnomes know a lot about. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yummy, yummy. Oh, oh, I almost forgot my balanced diet. I shouldn't be eating all this without also eating an orange. 
Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Dinner party. Nanny Plum, your pie, mash and chips is delicious. What's for pudding? I hope it's not too heavy. Treacle sponge pudding with blancmange and custard. Hooray! Excellent. Nanny Plum is the best cook in the little kingdom. I say Nanny Plum is the best cook in the whole world. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Hello. Hello. Queen Marigold here. <gasps> it's King and Queen Marigold. Oh, no. They're so boring and snooty. We were just eating a lovely meal of spinach with sea foam when we thought how nice it would be if you joined us for dinner tomorrow. They've invited us for dinner tomorrow. Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll handle this. Sorry, we can't come for dinner. Oh, dear. Dear, what a shame. I know you hardly ever get to eat good food. What? I'll have you know we have the best cook in the whole world. You have the best cook in the whole world? Yes. Oh. Well, then we must come to you for dinner instead. See you tomorrow. Toodle pip. Oh. I've got some good news and some bad news. What's the good news? Good news. We're not going to King and Queen Marigold's for dinner tomorrow. Hooray! What's the bad news? They're coming here. Oh, no! What are we going to do? King and Queen Marigold will want to eat something special. Luckily, we have the best cook in the whole world, Nanny Plum. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. What about baked potato stuffed with potato with chips and mash and a fried egg on top? No, Nanny. They will want special modern food. I can cook porridge. That's not modern food. What is modern food, Mummy? It is very delicate food in tiny portions. I can do tiny portions. <laughs> well done, Nanny. That is small. <laughs> Of course, it will get bigger when the magic wears off. When is the magic going to wear off, Nanny? Um, about now. Excuse me. <laughs> it's not just the size of the food, Nanny. Modern cooking is fussy. No problem. Nanny has until tomorrow evening to come up with something. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Good. That's that sorted. Nanny! What are you going to do? Uh, I don't know. Morning, Holly. Are you coming out to play? No, Ben. I need to help Nanny learn how to cook. But Nanny Plum's a very good cook. She is the best cook in the world, Ben. But she can't cook modern food. Why does she need to cook modern food? It's what King and Queen Marigold like, and they're coming to dinner tonight. What Nanny needs is a cookbook. Come on. Wait for me. Where are we going? The Great Elf Library. Ooh. Excuse me, wise old elf. Shush. This is a library. Sorry. We need a book of modern cooking for Nanny Plum. But Nanny Plum is an excellent cook. Yes, she's the best cook in the whole world. But she can't do modern cooking. Hmm. Let's see. The Elf Book of Pies, The World of Spaghetti and Mash, A Complete History of Egg Sandwiches. Is there anything modern? Uh, what exactly is modern cooking, Princess Holly? It is food that's very delicate and special, and not porridge. Oh. Wait a minute. This doesn't look like an elf book. That's because I'm not. Ah, a magical fairy book. What's that doing in my elf library? There 
are no words in the book. I am a magical cookery book. Where are all your recipes? Oh, if you tell me what you want to cook, I will tell you how to cook it. We want to cook a special modern meal, please. How modern? Uh, very modern. Certainly. You will need the following ingredients. Potato, carrot, onion, peas and cheese. That doesn't sound very special. Shush, I am thinking. Voila! One recipe for a very modern meal. Hooray! This is a library. Can I borrow this book, wise old elf? You can keep it, Princess Holly. Fairy books do not belong in the elf library. Thank you. King and Queen Marigold, how lovely to see you. Hello, darling. It's always a pleasure to visit your little kingdom. <laughs> I hope you're hungry. Nanny's been in the kitchen all day. We haven't eaten a thing since breakfast. We didn't want to spoil a dinner made by the best cook in the whole world. I wonder if baked beans are modern. Nanny, we've got a magic cookbook. Hello, Nanny Plum. Oh, you found my cookbook. Where was she? She was in the elf library. What were you doing in there? I was getting very bored. <laughs> <laughs> the book knows a recipe for a modern meal. Oh, good. What are the ingredients? A potato, a carrot, an onion, some peas and cheese. But that's what I would normally cook. Yes, the ingredients are simple, but the way we cook them is not. Now, boil a pot of water. Chop potato, carrot, onion, peas and cheese. And put them into the pot. Boil for one minute and then collect the steam. And serve. Is that it? It is a very delicate dish. It's so good of you to have us at such short notice. No trouble at all. We can't wait to see what the best cook in the world cooks for dinner. Oh, sorry, that's my tummy. I'm just so looking forward to this lovely meal. <laughs> dinner is served. Enjoy your meal, Majesties. Oh, yes, such a delicate flavour. So subtle. Nanny? Your Majesty? What's this called? Cloud of vegetable soup. It's just steam. Such a sensitive dish. Mm, how wonderful. I can barely taste it. Does it come with any potatoes? Uh, no. Nanny, I'm hungry. Me too. No problem. These leftover potatoes, carrots, onions, peas and cheese have made a lovely soup. Ooh, yummy! Um, this steam is delicious, of course, but will there be anything else to follow? Yes, even though it's very filling, I could eat a tiny something more. I could eat a lot, lot more. <laughs> What's that lovely smell? It's coming from the kitchen. This is delicious, Nanny. Mmm, it's the best. I say, what's this? It's just the children's supper. It smells very nice. It's only some soup I made from the leftovers. It's not very modern. You wouldn't like it. Could I try just a little bit? The taste is so tasty. Can I try some too? And me. And me. Oh, yes. So filling. <laughs> Marvellous, Nanny. Uh -huh. I have an announcement to make. Nanny Plum is in the best cook in the whole world. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, what would everyone like for pudding? Something modern 
or my treacle pudding? Treacle pudding! <laughs> <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the little castle. The woodpecker. Oh, do you have to knit? I like knitting. It's my hobby. Why does it have to be so noisy? Someone's a bit grumpy. I'm not grumpy. I'm bored. Maybe you should have a hobby, like stamp collecting. What's stamp collecting? You collect stamps and put them in a book. Why would anyone want to do that? How about train spotting? You look at trains and write down their numbers in a book. No one would want to do that. Or there's bird spotting. Don't tell me. I look at birds and write them down in a book. Yes. Something like that. I love birds. Please try it, Daddy. <sighs> OK. What do I do? You'll need binoculars, a bird spotter's bag and, of course, a book. Welcome to the world of bird spotting. Look for birds, then tick them off in this book. All right. I'll give it a go. A bird! What sort of bird is it, Daddy? Um, it's a robin! Yes, a robin! And I spotted it! This is rather fun! Oh, there's another bird! What does it look like? Um, it's got a long pointy beak! Oh, it's a woodpecker! A very special bird! Can I have a look, Daddy? Yes, Holly! Ooh, the woodpeckers landed on the great elf tree. Orange juice, Ben? Yes, please, Mum. Ah! Quick, everyone out! It's an earthquake! It's, it's an, an earthquake. earthquake! It's, it's an, an earthquake! earthquake! It's not an earthquake. Phew. It's worse than an earthquake. It's a woodpecker. Ooh. It's smashing the tree! It's made a hole! It's got inside! Oh, it's not in my flat! Phew! It's not in my flat! Ugh, our door's stuck! Here, son, let me try! <laughs> I believe we have found the bird. Everybody, keep calm and don't panic. Ah! Ah! Everybody out! Run for your lives! Ah! Hello, Ben. Hello, Holly. We've got a bird in our tree. Yes, I saw it first. It's a woodpecker. That's correct. I didn't realise your Majesty was interested in birds. Oh, yes. I'm a bird spotter. Here's my badge. Then it's very good you turned up. We need all the help we can get. Take me to the bird. Oh, thank goodness you're here, your Majesty. The woodpecker is in our home. It's building a nest. And soon there'll be eggs. And when they hatch, they'll be baby woodpecker chicks. And baby woodpecker chicks are extremely rare to spot. Fantastic. When they hatch, I can come back and tick them off in my book. It's got to go now before it lays its eggs. It can't go. I want to spot the chicks. This tree is for elves, not for woodpeckers. No nesting creature shall be disturbed. That's the law. Is it? Uh, it is now. <laughs> By royal command. Oh, it's in writing. We'll have to obey it. Elves never break the law. And, and we're, we're elves. elves. Splendid. That's that sorted. Can I stay and look at the woodpecker with Ben? Yes, Holly. I've got more bird spotting to do. Da da do dum da di da 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 di dum da da di da. There, all nice and tidy. Oh, what's this? It's just bird seed, Nanny. I'm trying to attract some rare birds. 
Don't sweep it up. Are you sure, Your Majesty? We don't want to attract a mouse. Look, Holly. Eggs. <gasps> They're hatching. Baby birds. Hello, I'm Ben and this is Holly. Oh, they're so sweet. Hmm, they'd be a lot sweeter if they weren't in our home. They're going. I think they're trying to fly. But they can't fly. I can teach them. Fairies are good at flying and I'm a fairy. <laughs> OK, baby birds, just copy me. Flying is easy peasy. Oh, they're not copying me. Maybe we should start with something simpler. How did you learn to fly? I've been flying since I was a baby. I can't remember my first flying lesson. Hmm. Let's begin with flapping, like this. <laughs> They're copying you, Ben. Now flap faster. Now jump. They're flying. Clever, Ben. You taught them to fly even though you can't fly yourself. Bye-bye, <laughs> birds. There they go. Goodbye, little ones. Oh, don't say you miss them now. No. Just got something in my eye. Have the chicks hatched yet? I want to tick them off in my book. They've flown away, Daddy. I taught them how to fly. Oh, baby woodpecker chicks are a once-in-a-lifetime sight for a bird spotter. But you missed them. It's not fair. Now I'm not going to spot anything good. <whistles> Hello? King Thistle, we've got a strange nest in the castle. A nest? I'll be there straight away. Nanny, where's the nest? It's in the middle of my kitchen. It's a... Don't tell me, Nanny. I want to be the one to spot it. Wow, that's a big nest. It can't stay in my kitchen. Nanny Plum. My law says no nesting creature may be disturbed. But it's a... Shush, Nanny. This is my hobby, not yours. I'll name it. Whoa! It's got beady eyes. Beady eyes? Hmm. It could be the beady-eyed blackbird. Aha! That sounds rare. <gasps> it's got whiskers. Whiskers? Uh, it could be the whiskered thrush. And it's got a long, scaly tail. A scaly tail? This bird is so rare, I don't even know it. I've discovered a new bird. It shall be named the King Thistlebird. If you say so, Your Majesty. But I don't want that filthy, smelly rodent in my kitchen. Nanny Plum, that's no way to talk about the King Thistlebird. We must let it lay its eggs in peace. I don't think rats lay eggs. Rats? <laughs> ah! The rats! <laughs> oh, you've got rats. Get rid of it! Yes, shoo, shoo. Get out of here, you filthy rat. <laughs> No, Your Majesty. The King Thistlebird must be allowed to stay. What? Your law says no nesting animal may be disturbed. Did I say that? Yes, Daddy. Well, um, maybe the law should say, um, uh... Let me see this law. You see, it's in writing. There's nothing we can do about it. As Queen... I declare this silly law abolished. <gasps> now, get this rat out of my castle. Um, Nanny Plum, you speak rat. Tell it to leave, please. Now, what's rat for please leave? Oh, yes. Ahem. Get out of my kitchen! <laughs> oh, Nanny, you've hurt a rat's feelings. I think I can live with that. <sighs> Why does knitting have to be so noisy? What? Daddy, it's brilliant. 
The baby woodpeckers are here. Now you can tick them off in your book. Ah, yes. Lovely. Honestly, darling, why do you have to have such a noisy hobby? 